let's talk about the male gaze. 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 Male gaze. Male gaze. Ugh, the male gaze. The male gaze was first coined by Laura Mulvey. The theory explores cinematic narratives and portrayals of women as constructed in an objectifying and limited manner to satisfy the psychological needs of men, setting the standard for women to be centered around the male gaze. The male gaze is a form of validation seeking. It's also a type of performance. The male gaze is about signaling to your audience, the males. So if your audience isn't the males, what is that called? Well, that's kind of referred to as the female gaze. And then of course, if you're more queer or gender fluid, maybe it would just be the audience. Films that I loved, films that had moved me, I was suddenly watching with different eyes. Instead of being absorbed into the screen, into the story, into the mise-en-scene and the beauty of the cinema, I was irritated. And instead of being an absorbed spectator, a voyeuristic spectator, a male spectator, as it were, I suddenly found I'd become a woman spectator who watched the film f from a distance and critically rather than with those um, absorbed eyes. Often when we produce media, we produce it with an audience in mind. Today she appeared on Zane Lowe's New Music Daily and talked about how motherhood has influenced this new era of work. I feel celebrated in my life and I hope that other women feel celebrated when they hear this and that everybody connects to the feminine part inside of them. Sexy, confident. What does it have to do with women? So intelligent. What part of a man's world is a woman's world? Realistically, we all need each other in order to build society, but this isn't really what that's about. It's pretty obvious that Katy Perry's new music video, infamously produced by Dr. Luke, is for the male gaze. And I know every time I say a male gaze, people think I'm saying male gaze. Yeah, they're all a bunch of gays. The male gaze is about consumption, seeing something I like and wanting to see it again. Like Katy Perry's boobs slapping against each other. Oh, not sure what that was. There is nothing wrong with seeking validation through the male gaze. Lots of women are straight or bisexual, pansexual. Even some men appeal to the male gaze. Of course, that actually might include male gaze. Ultimately, I don't want to add to the group of voices that already hate Katy Perry for this song. Fans are calling Katy out for working with producer Dr. Luke on her female empowerment anthem. I don't know. The comments are crazy. Wait, what are they saying? Mood day. Everybody yeah. has a feeling. Though I did do a review of it if you want to see it for my YouTube members. This is so funny because this feels obviously so in contrast to WAP, which I think was such a like a girl music video. WAP felt so for the girls. This does not feel like for the girls. You know why? And let me tell you the difference. I think ultimately what I want to do is open up the conversation once again and talk about the nuance of gaze. Ultimately in life, we are much like birds. We perform, we peacock, we sort of dance, we dress in a particular way to invite eyes upon us. It's not wrong to want validation and it's not wrong to want to be looked at. I think what's wrong here is assuming everybody's having a universal experience. Not all women perform for the male gaze. I think a good example of this is actually a lot of Gen Z artists, much like Chapo Roan rising to fame this summer. She's obviously creating imagery for the female gaze. And there's nothing wrong with Katy Perry or Chapel Roan, but as a Chapel Roan girly myself, obviously when I see Katy Perry's work, it feels like it's missing something. And what it's missing is representation. There are plenty of women that are gonna watch this music video and feel represented by it. It might not be me and it might not be you, but it's gonna be somebody. Girl boss shit, you can do it. You go girl. You were born to shine. And we're kind of just having fun being a bit sarcastic with it. It's very slapstick um, and very on the nose. And with this set, um, it's like, oh, uh, we're like, we're not about the male gaze, but we really are about the male gaze. And we're really overplaying it and on the nose because I'm about to get smashed, which is like a reset, a reset for me and a reset for my idea of feminine divine. And um, it's a whole different world we go to after this. <laughs> we wanted to open this video making it look like a super high gloss pop star video. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah! It's very like white feminism 2010, but is it wrong to feel like this song is identifiable, is relatable? I mean, it definitely is about women. It definitely is about a world, but it might not be my bubble or your bubble. But is that wrong? I think one of the reasons the song is obviously tainted is because it's associated with Dr. Luke. A reason why people um, are objecting badly to Dr. Luke's presence is because the singer Kesha, who is a protege of his, accused him of sexually assaulting her. Although it's surprising to me that no one flagged the fact that like, hey, maybe this isn't the best song to have his name attached. I am gonna cite on caution and I'm going to believe Kesha rather than not believe her. But I think for a lot of people who maybe don't believe Kesha or maybe miss the lawsuit altogether, Katy Perry's song doesn't represent anything negative, especially in relation to Dr. Lou. It simply represents a fun summer song for the girls. But the dilemma there is that it begs the question, is it for the girls? Is there something wrong with Katy Perry's male gaze music video, Woman's World? I think the only thing that feels wrong about it is that it's supposed to be for girls, but it definitely feels like it's for the boys. I think as a queer person growing up who loved Katy Perry, I did enjoy male gaze content. I did enjoy women through the male gaze, but I think I kind of faked that I liked it because it was what was presented to me as optional and available. I think if I'm being honest with myself, I've always preferred the female gaze, but obviously sometimes all you have is Hustlers Magazine and Playboy and Sports Illustrated, which are all for the male gaze. Funny enough, controversy with Jordan Peterson that happened a few years back with the model who was plus size, who he quote says wasn't beautiful, was actually appealing very heavily to the female gaze, not because she was overweight, but because she was different in some ways. And I, I know that sounds really weird, but what is the different? Well, the different was sort of the uniqueness of her aesthetic to not play into the expectation of the typical which would be the male gaze because of the patriarchy. And I know this sounds very feminism 101, but listen to me when I say this. Katy Perry's music video doesn't have representation like that in the video. Yes, there are black and brown girls, but it's not the same. The aesthetic ultimately in the music video is male gaze. And there isn't going to be an uproar from men saying they didn't like the video because it lacks the same thing we saw on that Sports Illustrated magazine that made Jordan Peterson so angry in the first place, something different. The something different isn't brown and black skin. The something different is the image altogether from head to toe. We know for a fact that black and brown girls play into the male gaze as much as white women do. So that certainly isn't what's unique to the aesthetic of difference. It's not your skin color. It's everything, the whole package. I actually, thinking of the BET Awards, want to point out that a lot of the Gen Z artists that appeared were more or less for the female gaze, which is interesting since I heard a lot of older millennial and Gen X people say the BET Awards was just not for them this year. <laughs> But for me, I really enjoyed it because I felt like the artists were really there for the girls. You know, as adults, as we grow up in the world, we have to really come to a consensus with ourselves. We have to weigh the pros and cons about how we represent ourselves and what we signal to the world. And ultimately, Katy Perry is signaling that she's in shape, she's here to sing again, and she's here to make an anthem, and we love to see it. But I don't know if she's here for the girls, which isn't her obligation, but also kind of a disappointment. Now, I think for all of us on the internet, seeing Trisha Paytas featured in the video was really lovely. But also Trisha Paytas has come under question on whether or not her participating in the video was also bad. Now, of course, I'm not gonna hold Trisha to that standard personally. I think if Katy Perry called me and wanted me in a music video, I'd probably take that opportunity, but I would feel pretty bad that Dr. Luke was associated with the music, which is, you know, it's interesting when you ask yourself that question, when do I neglect an opportunity or turn down an opportunity if somebody behind the scenes is associated with it? And I think that's a question we've had to face since the Me Too movement rose to prominence. A lot of the actresses within the Me Too movement said yes to a lot of the scripts in hopes to rise to fame, even doing things they didn't want to do in the first place in order to solidify their career in Hollywood. It's not my favorite part of the business world. It's actually my least favorite part. It's probably why I do turn down a lot of opportunities. And at the same time, can I really fault people for taking those opportunities in the first place? I'm going to say not really, but also yes. And I think that that balance between the two is really important 
important. In my opinion, life is lots and lots and lots of tiny contradictions. And so there's going to be opportunities in which we pick and choose our battles. I think Trisha Paytas choosing Katy Perry was probably the right decision in the battle, but Katy Perry choosing Dr. Luke was the wrong one. It's not just about appealing to the male gaze. It's about participating in the patriarchy that leaves women at the sidelines of the success. Great womanhood and let us celebrate democracy and let us celebrate woman power. This is the time that we will make Women and men share equally in the greatness of America. Thank you very, very much. Katy Perry didn't really win a battle for women with this music video. With that said, I don't care. I don't care what this woman is doing. I don't care what these people are doing. I'm gonna stay in my little queer bubble with Chapel Roan and everybody else and mind my business. Because ultimately, that's the best thing I can do for my life and it's what I recommend you do for yours. Let them stay in their bubble while we stay in ours. I've never been mainstream. I probably will never be mainstream but you don't have to be to be successful or happy. You do not have to find fulfillment in the male gaze or in the stereotype of the traditional. You don't have to find joy or happiness in the mainstream. I mean, I'm not even convinced they're happy. I am not convinced that most women who appeal to the male gaze are happy. None of my business though, because feminism didn't fight for women to be happy. It fought for women to have choice. So enjoy those choices, ladies. You're welcome.